There are about 7 billion people on Earth, and most of us are religious. About half the planet identifies with various forms of Christianity and Islam, and many of the rest adhere to other religions such as Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, and Jainism. Now, as a psychologist, this fact about humanity, our persistent religiosity, is fascinating. And this is because religious activities and religious beliefs are so hard to explain. A lot of what we do outside of religion makes sense from an evolutionary perspective. So people engage in activities like having sex or raising their kids or building shelters. And a lot of beliefs we have outside of religion fit our experience and are relevant to our lives, such as beliefs about the weather or what sort of food is best to eat, or most of all, what's going on in the heads of other members of the community. In contrast, religion involves seemingly non-adaptive activities, activities which seem downright odd, such as when people sacrifice valuable objects or choose not to eat perfectly healthy foods or scarring themselves or chopping off parts of their children's genitals. And religion involves beliefs that aren't in any obvious way grounded in everyday experience, such as beliefs in supernatural beings, life after death, divine creation, virgin birth, and so on. So there are a lot of questions here for a psychologist. You could ask about the origin of religion. You could ask how it develops in children, how it's encoded in the brain, how it varies from culture to culture, and many other things. And I'm interested in some of these questions. But what I want to focus on here is the question of the effects of religion, particularly religion's moral effects. So to put it crudely, does religion make us good or does it make us bad? A lot of people think they know the answer to this question. Many people think religion makes you good. And because of this, uh, they, they, they distrust and dislike atheists. Polling data, for instance, finds that Americans don't want atheists as presidents. They would rather vote for a Mormon, a Jew, a Muslim, or a homosexual. They also don't want their children to marry atheists. And if you ask them why, they would say atheists lack a moral core. They can't be trusted. A lot of people could quote Dostoevsky on this, where there is no God, all is permitted. On the other hand, there are some scholars, particularly many academics, who see religion as a force for evil. So Christopher Hitchens sums this up with typical clarity when he says that religions are, quote, violent, irrational, intolerant, allied to racism and tribalism and bigotry, invest in ignorance and hostile to free inquiry, contemptuous of women, and coerce, coerce, coercive towards children. So who's right? The obvious way to look at the effects of something is to compare what happens when it's present versus when it's absent. But the problem you run into here is that religion is everywhere. Even atheists tend to live in religious societies, and even those few atheistic societies used to be religious societies not long ago and often still contain religious beliefs and practices. So instead you have to look at more subtle differences. You look at more versus less religious people or more versus less religious societies, or you look at what happens when you make people think about religion through some sort of priming, for instance, more than they normally would. And when you do this, you get three main findings. The first is that religion is associated with moral goodness. So studies in the United States find that religious people give far more to charity than non-religious people. This is true for both religious charities, not surprisingly, but also non-religious charities like giving blood or helping the homeless. You also find that religious people are a lot happier with their lives. Experimental research finds that, um, that when you make people think about religion by, for instance, getting to unscrambled sentences with religious terms, it makes them more generous. They're, they're more generous in economic games. They give more to strangers. Another study finds that when you remind people of the Ten Commandments, they're later less likely to cheat. They're more honest. So in this regard, religion is associated with moral goodness. The second big finding is that religion is not associated with moral goodness. So across countries, you find that the religious societies are actually worse, more murder, more suicide, more sexually transmitted diseases than the religious societies. It's not true that religion makes these societies worse, but it serves at, le at least as an existence proof that you can be a good person in a good society without any religion at all. Experimentally, priming not only has its good effects, it has its bad effects. Uh, priming people for religious terms increases racial prejudice, um, it increases intolerance towards other religious groups, and increases approval of violent behavior towards other groups. The third big finding is that effects you get from religion, both good and bad, don't seem to be due to specifically religious belief, as opposed to other things that are associated with religion. So Robert Putnam finds this in extensive survey studies um, looking at what determines what people give to charity. And it turns out that a person's belief in God and the truth of scripture and heaven and hell in divine and creation and so on has no relationship at all 
with how much they give. All that matters is religious community. So as he puts it, you take an atheist who regularly goes to church, uh, maybe to keep her husband company, this atheist is going to be far more likely to volunteer at a soup kitchen than the most devout person in the world who isn't part of a religious community. And this importance of community helps make sense of why atheists do well in atheistic countries but do relatively poorly in the United States. This is because they lack access to the major source of community in the United States, churches, synagogues, and so on. Um, this community makes people happy and provides a framework for moral action, and in a country like America, atheists are excluded. In a country like Sweden, the atheists aren't excluded, and so they're happier and they do better. You can see the same um, irrelevance of religious belief in priming studies. So you don't need religious primes to get good behavior. You can use secular primes like the words police and contract. Um, similarly, you can get uh, a decrease in cheating, not only with the Ten Commandments, but also reminding of students of their university's honor code. So there's nothing special about religious beliefs for these good effects or bad effects. Now, the idea that religion, religious beliefs don't matter is going to outrage people on both sides of the debate. So defenders of religion, like Jeremy Waldron, often argue that specific claims within a religion, such as the teachings of Christ regarding the proper treatment of the poor, have a profound positive effect on people's moral actions. And critics of religion, like Richard Dawkins, often argue that specific claims within a religion, such as statements of the treatment of women and homosexuals, have a profound negative effect on people's moral actions. Now, I don't doubt religious beliefs have an effect some of the time, but there are a few reasons to be skeptical of the claim that they're a major force for moral goodness or moral badness. The first is the data I just mentioned. It really is hard to find evidence that pulling away from community, separate from community, separate from other factors, that religious belief correlates robustly with any interesting behavior. Second, we know from a lot of work in social psychology that people will often create post hoc justifications for their actions. So the fact that people cite religious authority when helping the poor or when ostracizing sexual minorities doesn't mean that this is actually what's motivating their behavior. And in fact, in his extensive historical analysis, Robert Wright argues that although people frequently explain their actions through appeals to the Bible or the Koran or other religious texts, the actual causal force is more likely to be situational. So if individuals find themselves in a society that's dog-eat-dog -dog with zero-sum relationships, they tend to find scriptural motivation for hatred and war. When they find themselves in a society where their fates are intertwined with other people in a positive way, they look into the scriptures and they find a message of tolerance and love. So a tentative conclusion here is that moral actions in the real world, such as suicide bombings, racial prejudice, kindness to strangers and generosity are all related to religion, but not to religious belief. And so while it's often claimed that the specific moral ideas encoded in the world's religions have an important effect on our lives, there's surprisingly little evidence for this popular view.